thing. And then as they left, one came in who wanted to play for a little bit. So she zoomed around and, and had a nice time. Yeah. And she loves the golf cart, man. As soon as I get back in the garage from taking her for a walk, she promptly, you have guests waiting in the lobby. Do you see that? There's yeah. Rick. <laughs> um, hey, Rick. As soon as she hey, gets good morning. Her, hey, guys. Hey, Rick. We're moving hey. into the cold season. Uh-oh. <laughs> nah, I just forgot to shave this morning. <laughs> oh, that's just one nice, day. Nice looking one day scrub there. I know, I know right? right? That's pretty amazing. Just check out and it pops out. You know, that's one thing I've always noticed. I would never notice whether he had a beard or not because he's not one of those kind of guys. You, he looks the same with a beard or without a beard. And over the years, I realized that some days I would see him and go, something's a little different, but I don't know what it is. And I go, oh, he's here today. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. So the, so the um, is she in the lobby? I haven't seen her. You see maybe, her? Maybe, maybe you've already let him in. No, I don't see her. Someone started recording. Okay, we don't care. Rick, there's more, there's more gray in this beard than the last one. <laughs> He's jealous. He's trying to turn white. More grain? Gray. <laughs> gray. Oh, gray. Gotcha. That's good, right? <laughs> I don't want to portray myself as a younger guy. Yeah. You're going to be brothers. You might as well match, right? <laughs> there you go. Takes him six years to catch up. I know, right? <laughs> well, you know, when you're six years ahead. <laughs> you know, it looks it looks very much like that. The sky looks very much like that here in, in Atlanta today, but it's not supposed to rain. Yeah, very overcast. Yeah. Yesterday, I thought it was going to storm. It was just really, really overcast. Look at this AT&T transmission this morning. I mean, that's really good. It is. Everything's clear and no lag and... My goodness, something happened. Maybe all the people were still snoozing. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> we have dominant uh, transmission here. Give it another few minutes, so uh, people start waking up. <laughs> that's what it's called, dominant transmission. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Dominant uh, transmission. How Cindy today? Uh, I think we're all kind of wore out. We've been working on fence. That's what I'm getting ready to do. We uh, tearing the fence down so we can get the the guy that cuts the trees to come down and cut them. Where are the horses? The horses. We're not cutting that fence down. No, the horses are still at the barn. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so basically. We took in, hang on a minute, let's see how this works. It won't change. There it goes. There it goes. So we took the fence down. Oh, this is did. just here. Yeah, we have a pathway up through the field so that when they cut the trees across the driveway down there, uh -huh. they can drive through the field here. But I didn't, you, you, you to be clear, you used to have horses horses grazing in that pasture there, right? That is correct. Okay. Yes. That's the fence Alex used to stand on with the tractor. Hey, what you yeah, doing? That's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, it was it was nice to see Alex and talk to her last week. It was okay. very how fun. <clears throat> yep, she's she's still here. We, we, we can't get rid of her. Well, it looked like she went down to Cleveland. You guys didn't go? Oh, yeah. We all went. We went yesterday, or day four yesterday. Okay. And we How's went down to uh, see his game, but he ended up getting hurt the night before, and they went to the emergency room. He tripped on his own shoelace. Oopsie. <laughs> and uh, and uh, ran into some type of table or something in his side. Oh, my God. And he said he was throwing up and hurting really bad, so they took him to the ER. And they found out he has an enlarged 
kidney on one side, which is probably what they consider genetic. But oh. they're going to scope it out anyway. Well, what a, you know, a bad news, good news story. If he hadn't have fallen, they wouldn't have found that. That's right. It's, wow. it, it's, it's one of those things. But that's not something he, they would do anything about, is it? First of all, you got to figure out why it's enlarged. So sure. that would be uh, the reasoning they would research it just a little bit more. Yeah, if it's genetic, they're not likely to do anything. No. <laughs> if it's cause of the fall, they certainly have to get it. Right. Wow. Wow. How <laughs> fortuitous. Yeah. But you got um, to see that's even nicer that you got still got to spend time with them. Well, we went down there because it's uh, Ashley's birthday. Oh, that's right. It is Ashley's birthday. And she's 31? Yeah. <laughs> she's over the hill now. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, 40? Well, I, saw, I saw pictures that, that Alex posted on Instagram. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Very How old nice. is Ashley? 40. 40, 40. Lordy, Lordy, she is 40. Yeah. I'm old man. I know, right? <laughs> So we took in the, uh, my dogs keep trying to follow me. As they should. <laughs> Devoted. Mine's like that. She cries when I leave. Yeah, they bark. <laughs> Let me out. How do I go? <laughs> it almost sounded like they were talking. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> they do. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we went down there and had a little get together uh, with the family. They're, you know, Scott's mom and uh, Les, her dad, right. and, and her, his wife. And uh, we were all there and had a little party get together. And then we got up and left because <laughs> we can't stay. Yeah. Because we have to come back for the dogs. Right. Right. How, how far of a drive is it? It's about three hours. Holy cow. Two and a half, three hours, depending on how many times I have to stop and go to the bathroom. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Can't you get the dogs a little camper? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think the one dog, which uh, Sam, the one we picked up from Ann, is a little neurotic and, and doesn't do well. And she... She, I mean, it's really sad, but she really doesn't know how to play. She doesn't understand. She gets excited, but she doesn't know what to do. Right. She wasn't shown. She wasn't allowed. No. And it's really weird to have a dog that doesn't know how to play or yeah. mess around with you. It's like she totally doesn't get it. And, you know, they're 12 years old, so yeah. too late now. I was thinking about this. I was thinking that how old they must be, 11, 12, 14. Yep. So. I mean, she's gotten a lot better. She She's getting more affectionate, so to speak. But she's say, very, doesn't she kind of learn from Bailey? Yes. They both have picked up bad habits from each other. <laughs> <laughs> Not the good ones, only the bad ones, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like before because I'm a, the kind of guy that goes out in the yard and picks up the poop and gets rid of it, right? Yeah. My brother-in-law takes the hose out there and hoses it down and manipulates oh, no. it. You know? But I'm the guy that goes out there and picks it up and right. tries to get rid of it. And uh, Bailey, the dog we've always had, would poop and walk. Well, that's <laughs> aggravating for somebody that has to pick up poop because it yes, could be it 10 it feet is. between poop. Well, Sam didn't do that, but all of a sudden now Sam does that. Oh, great. It's like, I've got no time to use the bathroom. I got to go. You have to follow the trail. <laughs> well, you know, Dax kind of does that. Dax will poop, and then you'll run off to another area. And so you go to the first one to pick it up, and then he's pooping in another area. You got to keep an eye on him constantly because he's usually yes. three times. Three, you know, that's interesting because I three times. You're right. There's I always look for three. That's crazy. Well, They're my, both the same way, too. My little dog is great. She just goes on and out. Business tinkle, tinkle, go, and boom, she's done. 
He's young. <laughs> He's you young. better set that up because it's working like that. Well, I thought you were going to invite, uh, how'd you say that, Pat, Patty? Patty. It's paprika if you think of the spice. Paprika. <laughs> <laughs> paprika. You thought I was going to what? Well, you said you were going to bring paprika today. Well, yeah. I, I had her here earlier, um, but we're going out afterwards, and um, so I'll, I'll bring her next week. We're going to go to Ocala this morning. Oh, yeah? Ocala? Mom wants to go to Hobby Lobby, so we're going to go check out Hobby Lobby. And I had her down here yesterday and today because we had some we, – we were trying to put her door uh, – Mom got a ring doorbell. We're going to move the camera you have that you sent Tom to the back. Okay. So we got a, ring, got a ring, but it's defective. The guy, poor guy stayed here for like an hour and a half trying to get it to connect. And it turns out it's defective. So now we got to go get another one. We're going to have to turn that one back in and they'll send another one. The guy will come out and reconnect that. So, what happened to your eye? I'm sorry? What happened to your eye? Oh, you like it? That's a new, uh, that's a tattoo. Well, you know, our mother's had a couple of them and I thought, wow, I really need to take that to my mom. <laughs> Uh, actually, good. I was actually, yeah, yeah. Well, this is a, after a week. I did it. It happened last um, Thursday night on the plane, actually. And it's got a little knot right there. The knot was bigger. And nothing happened when it first hit. No blood, no foul. I thought, great, that's good. We're all good to go. Um, got off the plane. The swelling went down. And, um, and then... The next day it started getting dark around here, and then the next day it got dark around here, and then the next day it started getting dark around here. And, uh, and now it's like a full-edged black eye. Um, but the, the what happened is I don't usually allow people to help me get my bag down, but these days, you know, that you used to be able to put your bag on like this, wheels back in the handle and it's lying down. Right. Now the new painters want you to stand up the bag. So right. I stood up. Two bags and I couldn't get my laptop bag out easily. So the man behind me said, Well, let me give you a hand. I'm like, Oh, okay. So he gives it a push and it pushes right down on my face, on my forehead. Oh, no. <laughs> so, I thought maybe you got into a, to a, to a uh, scuffle with an anti masker or something. No, uh, I, don't, I don't pay people any mind on the plane. They can get kind of crazy. But, I yeah, thought maybe it was the you were giving the airlines grief, and they said they have gotten a new policy said we're not taking this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're not taking this anymore. <laughs> yeah, so, well, I'm, so, I'm sorry anyway, we didn't was, notice it last week. It didn't happen. It was not hardly there last week. It was just the bump here on the forehead, yeah. and it was just dark up under my hair, so my hair covered up. So I thought that's all it was going to be, and over the week, it's just grown and grown and grown. <laughs> so everybody got in a fight or something. Look, at, at least you have somebody that can give you advice on this sort of stuff from experience. <laughs> that word. Say that again. You broke up. Say that again. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Like first-hand experience advice. That's thing. right. That's another thing you can go to mom and talk to her about. <laughs> yeah. well, how are you, mom? So you guys, oh, hold on one second. You guys broke up at the time you said it. I don't know if it's because I moved the, the iPad over here. So can you say what you said again? Because we missed it. Oh, uh, we said I said that it's a good thing you have somebody that you can call on uh, for advice uh, because of their firsthand experience with this sort of thing. Yes. Right. There you go. Yep. Moms are always good for that. <laughs> no matter what. <laughs> All right. So, you, uh, so they, uh, they're putting in a ring. That's nice. Rings are nice. Well, the reason I got one was I, want, I wanted one on the back porch, and I wanted to hear. You could hear from here. I mean, I can the doorbell. Ring sure. the doorbell. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to put yours on the back because I'm worried about that screen. Somebody could come in easily. 
Well, you know, for what it's worth, I saw somebody took theirs and put it up at their bird feeder. And it's really nice. Yeah, because, you know, they get right up. Uh, you know, I know mine here at home, sometimes on one corner, I've got a bird that lands on like the downspout. Mm -hmm. And he's just in clear view, but more more often the case is that uh, the wasps will congregate around the cameras, and I get really interesting pictures of the wasps. Well, just what you want to see, right? Yeah. You mean they can actually zoom in that well? Yeah, that they can get that close and don't don't distort. Mine have, although the guy that was showing the one with the uh, the birds I saw yesterday. He said he adjusted his, he took the lens off and adjusted it somehow because he must have his right in the bird feeder. Oh, wow. We haven't put a bird feeder back out since you got back because we need to figure out how to um, keep the squirrels and the rats from crawling up the holes and eating all the food. So, well, I think you should get one of those ones. No, they're... They figured out how to knock it down. So, I think you should get, well, I think you should get one of those ones that. Uh, <laughs> Look, hi, sweetheart. So I think you should get one of those ones that uh, spin around. Yeah, that's the Yankee Flipper. Because I think that's Yankee so flipper. entertaining. That's what Tom told us. Thanks for saying that again. The Yankee Flipper. I'm going to write that down this time. Yeah, uh, we have people the. Jesse Israels. What do you call them people? The Jesuits? No, the nice nice comeback though. Uh, these landscaping people that sell stuff. The gypsies. The gypsies. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they sell they sell lots of stuff. <laughs> uh, when you said driveway, I was thinking the driveway toppings, you know, like they do. Yeah, I don't remember. Anyway, yeah, they they sold those things a lot. Well, you know, the video sells it. I mean, particularly if you get aggravated with the squirrels getting into your bird feeder. Mm -hmm. there, there was this one I was watching. I was at a job. You have to forgive me. I'm trying to do hey. Uh, and uh, he went up to the banister on the on the uh, deck and jump down <laughs> and landed on the bird feeder to get to the bird feeder yeah they do that they figure <laughs> out ways to do it acrobatics is that what i'm hearing yeah it was wow cool. what was funny is i i didn't get to see him jump down but i saw him you know, eating off of it. And I thought, how did he get there? And then I started looking as he would go back up the banister, you know, after he'd come off the bird feeder again. Well, yeah, remember they jump from tree to tree. So, you know, if it, as long as it's within about 20 feet, they can probably get to it if they got high enough, if they're high enough. Yeah. Be agile. They do that here, they'll jump from the gutter into the tree limb over to the bushes and the bushes around to the bird feeder. They get on the, the bush and fly out to it. Even if we put it away some distance, they can fly to well, it. Well, you know how we are. When it comes to food, whatever it takes, you know we're all going to figure out how to get to it. Yeah, <laughs> I know. That's kind of crazy, isn't it? <laughs> How's Lori today? Lori's good. She's a uh, she was up when I got back with, uh, with Paprika, and she was ready to see her. It's, you know, she doesn't like to have her on morning duty because it disrupts her sleep, and she's cranky when she sleeps. You know, you know what that reminds me of? What? When Alex was three or four years old or so, five, she'd come in Saturday morning, and and wake me up, you know, push on me, uh -huh. get up, I want to play. And I taught her one time, I said, honey, go ask your mama to play. Oh. Go, and she goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> Even at five, she knew. <laughs> well, you know, 
when uh, I I was hanging around with Danny Abercrombie one time, and uh, he wanted I think he wanted to go to, he wanted us to do a trip to to Lakeside or something like that, and I went and asked Dad, and he said no. So I came back and told Danny, I'm not going. I can't go. My dad said no. He said, well, go back and ask him again. And I did just like Alex. Oh, no. I doubt my daughters have any of that experience with that. But. Yeah. Your daughters slept in all the time that I recall. They were sleepers. Pardon? Your daughters were late risers, so they would sleep in. Yeah. 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 That, mine would always wake me up. Let's go play. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Well, Brooke, Brooke took a. She, Brooke didn't go to work for Alta. She went to work for a company called Kendra Scott. Kendra Scott. Yeah, we saw that on. I saw that posted yesterday. Uh, congratulated her. I, I Scott, Scott to see what it was about. It's a jewelry, like a jewelry place, right? Yeah, there's like three of them in Atlanta. I think she has. There's 15 of them total. That's but she's um, um, she's got she's going for the unit. She she was hired as an assistant store manager, okay. and this is a bigger store than than all than uh, loft. And uh, anyway. Her uh, her boss got promoted to a corporate job and came to her and said, "Would you like to take this job?" So she's supposed to interview with her uh, regional manager on Monday about it. Awesome! Right. Wow! Cool. Yeah. Well, put good vibes out there that she can get. Position. Yeah, having gotten her first paycheck and gets a promotion. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's great. That happens sometimes. You know, Lori went to work for. Uh, Car America as an assistant manager, and and shortly thereafter, they sent her boss out to um, to California for an uh, um, for a I guess a temporary assignment. Right. And then her boss came back and got pregnant, and Lori had been running the show while her boss was gone. So they promoted her to step to uh, re to I guess to a, an official manager of all the portfolio, and. Apparently, she did even better than her old boss did. So she got lots of accolades. Good day. Did uh, did Taryn call you, Betsy? Did who? Taryn, Taryn, the lady that I was talking that I uh, said might talk to you about your uh, condo. Taryn, I, did haven't, you? I haven't heard from her. You know, I get calls from numbers I don't know, but no one's left a message. Yeah. Well. Uh, she, I think, she had a place to stay with her family when she first got up there. So I thought she would probably, she'd probably wait till she got up. There. Okay. Her name, is Karen, her name is Karen Hairston. Harris, Terry Q. Karen, Karen Hairston. Hairston. Yeah. Okay. Like I said she works for the SEC. Yeah. Okay. And that's that's the federal one, not the right. college one. Well, right. 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 Got it. I know which one it is. Hey, so I'll look out, you know, I, I don't know if there's a certain number I should look out for. You know, I get spam calls all the time, but I'm assuming she'll leave a message if she calls. I'll, I'll drop her a note that, to that, you know, you don't you don't answer calls. And she doesn't have the number. So or, or I'll send you the number. How, how's that? All right. And it's Karen or Karen? Karen? T-A-R. T-A-R. Got it. Y-N. Y-N. Oh, what an interesting name. Huh. Yeah, yeah, mom. Yeah, how's things going with you? Doing good, staying busy. Yeah. Are yeah. you still uh, fixing up the house? When I get a chance to, yes. Seems which, like every time I turn around, something else is getting in the way. <laughs> which which house are you trying to work on? I mean, are you working on the one you want to rent next year for a yes. season? Yes, uh, that's the one I want to work on, but we're having to tear a fence down for uh, for the guy to do trees, cut the trees down. We've got uh, 20 trees to cut down. Was that, did you make money off of 20 trees? He is. <laughs> he will? Yeah. Okay. 
Is it he, out he's not paying you. Man. Is it out of state? They're paying for it. The estate, yeah. Good, good, good. They're they're heavily heavily leaning over our uh, driveway and houses and yeah. stuff like that. So. We saw a show uh, yesterday, yet day before yesterday, and they were the they go in and fix houses, older houses that have a history behind them. Mm -hmm. They went into this house that looked just like Betty's house, yeah. not, just like Betty's house everywhere. And they could then when they took the the um, ceiling down, they're like, "Why is it like that? This is weird. This house is all weird. It's all put together. It's like something they put two houses together or something, you know." Yeah. And what they discovered when they went back and looked at the history is that apparently in 1919 or 1920, a big hurricane came through. Uh, it's in the New England area. And a tree, a big tree in the house fell right on the house and cut it right in half, like split it in half. Oh, and because wow. they didn't have any money, this was the Depression era, you know, around that time, they didn't have money to fix the house. They just sort of fixed it any way they could to put it back mm -hmm. together and to live in it. And, you know, he said, gosh, it was a wonder it didn't fall down <laughs> because of the way <laughs> it was back together. Because the tree just tore it through the roof and all the way through the house, walls and everything, down to the flooring. Oh my. Thinking out that house, right? <laughs> but uh, but it's a shame you, they didn't take the trees down before you had to do all that work. Well, yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> actually, actually, that was not a tree. That was a divorce. He just he said, "Here's your half. Here's my half." <laughs> 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 yeah, so is Lori going to Ocala with you guys? No, she has. Uh, we have. She has work to do. <laughs> Ain't you the boss? <laughs> um, some days. <laughs> well, She's you slave driver, you. <laughs> work to do. It's invoice time. It's first of the month. How how did it uh, roll out in uh, the airport guy? Um. That are you, for DFW? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we we lost out on that actually. Um, Wait a minute! I thought you were doing all the training and everything. Well, we did all that for one portion of the project, so that piece is ended for us. Right. And they put they put out another request for proposal to actually put one together to expand on the uh, system awareness system and call it a. Um, a piece of, and I can't remember what the P stands for, but, but it's a secure, it's a more secured system for looking physical around the airport and all access doors, uh, all what they call portals in an airport. And we have another contract out there where we have one of our staff has been uh, monitoring, testing, bringing vendors in and testing different pieces of uh, physical access equipment. Um, so we were under the vendor of choice. So there was no conflict of interest because everybody bid on the same project. All vendors had to pick that product and we were a sub under that. One of the primes came back and said, well, we don't want you to be a sub under them. And we said, well, we can't do that because we're a conflict. It would make it a conflict of interest. So they apparently, we don't know, but this is the way it works in business. Somehow they're wheeling and dealing, got the airport to cancel the project and reissue it. And when they reissued it, they said that this this product was no longer the product of choice, that it was the preferred product. But um, if if anyone, whether they're a sub or not, has other conflicting interest in the airport, then they can't bid. So we couldn't bid. So we were out. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, even though the airport likes the work we do, um, apparently this prime, whoever it is, has some clout in getting, and apparently the airport wants that vendors. So I don't know why they just don't direct award to them. You know what I mean? So the DFW under a city, uh, charge? Yes, they, have, they have to have proposals, but you know what, when they do crap like that, it's one not fair to the small businesses who put a lot of time into the development of the proposals. Right. And two, it's not fair to the other vendors because other vendors like the MC Deans and the Dine Corp, what is it called? Um, 
you know, it's not done for, um, anyway, Siemens, Siemens, people like that. Uh, you know, it's not fair because that's a lot of time and money for them to write a proposal if they are going to select that one vendor. Right. So, and I kind of said that because Siemens called us after they re-released that proposal and they said, we want to, you know, talk to you guys and we want to do some work with you guys. And we said, we, we can't do it. You know, we're, we're kind of out of it. And so we kind of put a bug in their ear and said, you know, this, we think there's some shady business that's going on over there. And the prime that the, the company we were working under believes it was some shady business too. I said, if I were you guys, if you don't get the bid, I would, I would challenge it back up to the board. And they said, well, it's our fault because they recompeted it because we called them out on having another small business that was not even a small business in Dallas. They were claiming that SDI was in Dallas and they weren't, they weren't legitimately there. And that's what had everybody start looking at us. So um, I said, well, you know, this is the way it is. We, we are not, we don't have the kind of money to go challenge them on that. And, you know, it's only a small piece of the whole project. It's like an $18 million project. Really? I, if I was Siemens or NC Dean or somebody like that, I would go back to the board and say, this was shady. This was shady because here's what you did. I mean, I, the, the airport here in Atlanta is run by the city of Atlanta, and the city of Atlanta is rampant with corrupt been rampant with corruption over the years and you know and that has influenced stuff at the airport as good as the airport is all those contracts are shaded somehow well, you know uh, they don't understand how much money these vendors put into these things how much time and energy it takes to go through all of that and well, well my point is they're political it is yeah. political the, but uh, on this side it's but what we do know is that the IT director, who's and and I, you know, probably the director of Arkeum, want this particular product because they have snowed them with, dazzled them with bells and whistles of what this system is going to do. And I can tell you from working in the Pentagon when that happens, those products never pan out the way they're supposed to. That company that they're favoring does not have the history that all the other vendors have of successes. So they're like going out on the limb. You know, trying to get this, and I think it's all based on five hundred thousand dollars less than the others. That's what it came down to, which is sad. Yeah. Well. Anyway, well, there's more I, to that story. Yeah. So we're bu we were bummed out about that, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Our so there'll be other pro there'll be plenty of other projects because so much changing coming on. Right. We'll keep, you know, we'll keep, uh, I, I actually am working on another one uh, and I'm calling the guy on Monday, follow up with him, but that's all of the, the, the um, what do they call it? The, um, shoot, it's the protective services unit. So yeah. I'm going to, I'm reach, I've been working with them. I did some pro bono kind of stuff for them and they really like the engagement. So they said, Hey, we're interested. Let's talk some more. So we're going to talk some more next week and see how I can get in, how we can get in the door with them. I'm yeah. not like the world's greatest salesperson here. So, you know, it's like well, these big it, companies have these salespeople that go in and snow these people. I go in and give them, you know, a free picture of what we're going to do for them and show them the, how we're going to move forward. And it's hard. It's hard to get them to off the well, dime to a contract. Go, go read that book I told you about. Never split the difference. Never split the difference. Okay. Just ask them, what do you want? And listen to them. Yeah. And then feedback would, you know, where it's appropriate. But, you know, you got, as far as there's so many changes coming, I read an article yesterday, and forgive me about the electric cars. I know I've been odd, you know, sickening here about that. But this pointed out, this point, you know, the, the general consensus has been this is going to take a really long time for the airline, the airplane industry to follow cars. You know, in the transition to electricity. Well, that's not necessarily true. This thing pointed out yesterday that 70% of all air flight of air is, is you know, in the what they call the short hops, like the Piedmont used to do. Mm -hmm. And electric planes would be perfect for that. Sure. So the, they're fast becoming, and, and plus the air taxis for, for a big urban city. Mm-hmm. Are coming on strong now. When you when you realize that you can take 
uh, well, the, the big thing about a, an electric plane is where it would cost $420 an hour for a plane, it would cost $24 an hour for an electric plane. Interesting. So that is a huge disruptor. And then you add into all the urban opportunities like they do in Brazil with helicopters to get people with means. And I guess they do it in New York and Chicago and every place too. But now you can start ferrying the, the anybody across the city in just a few minutes. Right. And, uh, and it missed all the congestion. So, so we're really going to get the my Jetson mobile pretty soon, aren't we? Pretty much. Well, they've got several of them out now. Um, the, uh, that they're in the certification stages. Yeah. Uh, well. But they actually took they actually took a king not a king air a a piper uh, oh. like a, a a 16 seat piper right. and put an electric engine on it and went um, something like 400 miles. So, so who yeah, wait a minute is that the one that did the 15 minute flight? I'm sorry. Rick? Is that the one that did the 15 minute flight? That was the first flight for electric electric plane. No, the, the, uh, the, they've got several electric planes, you know, electric opportunities now. The one I'm talking about, I think they went an hour and 40 minutes. Um, and uh, it was longer than they thought they would be up. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it was it's like a 16, a 16 seat plane. Well, that's that's the perfect size for going from, say, Atlanta to Macon or Ocala to Orlando. Uh, or Tallahassee to Orlando. So that will be what we'll see them first. So we and could it, easily go have a water burger and come back in an hour. Yeah, look at the cost, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. but the, point is, the point is it's going to drastically change the airline industry. Yeah. It'll take, it'll take pressure off of the big ones. Yeah. Well, okay. I can still do the long trips, but all those little airports that are underutilized, yep. you should start being beefed up. Okay, so I get I get the uh, you know fossil fuel creates havoc in our atmosphere. Yes. But what does the battery process uh, consist of as far as you know? Is that going to be wreaking havoc on our atmosphere or environment? It, Rick, any time that you that you make a change. Or any, any there, there are always challenges to it. Um, you're going to be mining minerals, so to speak, to make these batteries. The big, the big pushback on it is, well, what happens when the battery dies and you have to get rid of it? What's going to happen to our landfills? That's pretty much not going to be a factor because um, the 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 batteries that they're testing now, they're 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 looking at for a car. They're easily at 500,000 miles now, and pretty sure they'll be at a million here shortly. And plus, when for and what's different is a battery. A battery for a car, when it's done for a car, it can be re repurposed for other things like use in your house, and that will be a big thing. We will all have batteries in our houses for uh, for uh, interruptible supply and to reduce our reliance on what they call the peaker power plants out there where that's the part that makes your power bill go up so high during the winter or summer uh, when you when everybody's using electricity so the, so the, the, you know the, the, it's a good question but it's um, um, at some point you're, you're looking you're probably looking at a really long time down the road because all those batteries should be repurposed for some reason well we hope that uh, anything that we have, has a repurpose to it, you know, just like our whole point discussion around sure. the new space. That that and, and, and what, All that could go into batteries. <clears throat> I don't, I don't know that that's true. But well, one of the other pushbacks on the on the batteries too is that the process of of building an electric car actually takes more car take, is more of a carbon footprint than a car. At, 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 you know, you think about that. That would be absurdly not true. There are so many more parts in a, in a gas engine car, and and not not to knock the gas engine car about that, but there's so many more parts in it. Actually, you know, the, the footprint at, at best they'd be the same, or at worst they'd be the same. Where you really takes off though is after you've had a, an electric car for 
say two or three years, um, you're, you're operating in an area where there's no carbon footprint anymore and you're not using gas and the, uh, an internal combustion engine car still is. Uh, but the other thing too is that uh, I heard somebody say this, um, as far as fossil fuels go, it's not a question of, uh, 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 will we run out of fossil fuels? It's a question of when will we run out of fossil fuels? And we need to put that off as far as we can. Right. And so, but there is another question, and I'm not sure who brought it up this week, but um, <clears throat> should, and I think it has something to do with like the other countries who will turn off the power of their nation, people who decide they don't want to have electricity for the moment. Uh, China. If, if that was who I was thinking about. So, yes. Yeah, so, if if something happened and we did not have access to electricity, we might be sort of dead in the water completely if we were totally electric. So we're always going to have to have some alternatives out there to turn well, back. Okay, you know, from, from that standpoint, you know, that's a good point. And I would hope that somehow that nuclear works its way into that. Yeah. Uh, a safer nuclear, and, they, and, they, and they've come up with that. It's still, the, the cost between nuclear, though, even the safest nuclear is so much more yeah, it's exactly. than, you know, the, the thing about a, a, a solar and the wind is that now it is cheaper. If you were going to go build a house off the grid, um, you, could, you could build that house cheaper putting solar and wind, or wind in there with batteries then you could uh, pay for the lines to be put to your house. Uh -huh. uh, it's just it's just cheaper now, and, and that's a, that's been a big thing. Is you know at what point does it become cheap? We are there. Uh, but anyway, but I'm coming in here because I'm I, was just, I was just I was just I was just <laughs> I, didn't mean to, I didn't mean to go down that rabbit hole. I apologize. I just wanted to point out that the air planes are going to change here shortly too. And the airports will change. I'm looking for my phone. You well, lost your phone? You want me to call it? <laughs> it, it is. It, you know, I like it. It's a disruptor at this point in time, and I really hope that, um, that you know, we get there in my time so that I can experience some of these new technologies. Okay. But then again, no. I look around my mom, and she's overwhelmed with the new technologies that we're dealing with and saying, well, well, I can't. The thing about new technologies, even mom is adept into them. They're getting easier. Searching for the network. Huh? I know she she's doing it. You know she. What did I do this morning? I sent her Justin's email and she accepted it. And then we uh, we put it in her phone and she did it. There she is. Hey. You find <laughs> it? I'm gonna go now. back to work. <laughs> you gotta go back to work. Well, Rick, I didn't mean to run you, you off. Go back to work. Yeah. So I'm going to get off here. Okay, so, love you, bro. Didn't mean to bore you, bro. Okay. No, you didn't bore yeah, me. So you could find <coughs> Oh, okay. I just got to go back to it. You guys have fun. Tell Cindy hi. Okay, love you. Yes, tell love Cindy you. we send her love. and love I love y'all. Love you, Mom. Love y'all. Love you. See you. Bye. See you next time. Bye. See you next time around. Mom, you found your phone, I take it? She did. She has it in her hand. Okay. She said, why is he calling me? Like, so you could find your phone. <laughs> well, you know, you're supposed to be able to ask Google to do that. I thought we had it set up that way. If you didn't, I'm sorry. Well, Google. How does she ask Google to do it? Oh, oh, the Google on her. Yeah, just say, okay, call my phone. Oh, well, I will have to ask Google to do that to see if okay. so she knows you can how always, if, if it's not set up, you can always say, uh, Call and then say the number. Okay, Google. Now mine are going to go off. Uh -huh. I don't know my number. I understood. Going to go off. You don't know your home number? Is that right? Yeah. Your cell number? Your cell number? He's saying something. Well, I don't know. I couldn't hear because we were talking. He was saying. Okay, Google. Call my phone. It looks like you don't have any alarms. Stop doing it. Okay. Oh, I got it. He he needs to verify her voice, and he needs to get her phone numbers. What he says. 
I thought it, I thought we'd given him access to her phone number. This, this this guy is in the living room, so maybe we gave it to the other guy. And Should be the same for all of them. Should but be. Maybe. He's still bugging us. Okay, she has to do a voice match first. So we'll okay. Do that. Okay, Google, stop. So. I think you can do that just by audio, saying let's do a voice match. Really. He was trying to get her to do that initially, but we weren't listening. We were paying attention to you. <laughs> and he got offended and he says, he said something. They else. ignored. Yeah. Why are you ignoring me? <laughs> <laughs> well, one of them told me the other day, well, something about it was doing for me. It was what? It was. She said that what she was doing was for me. Okay. <laughs> Don't you know that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She's your little robot. Right. She's your robot. Well. Hey, Mom, I had a curiosity. Who's the first president you remember? Who? You. Me. Roosevelt. Roosevelt. Yeah. Okay. We all like Roosevelt. Why it's just say he was president until you were 10 years old, right? Yeah. So, I don't know. It's the longest one, right? Did he go three terms? Yeah, three plus. He was 12. Three. 12 yeah. And then Truman. Huh? Then Truman took over, didn't he? Yeah, but you remember Roosevelt. Okay, I was just curious. I, I, if, after, I wasn't thinking Roosevelt was there for a long time. So. Yes, he was. Practically from the time, actually from the time you were born until you were... 10, 11 years old. Yeah, interestingly enough, by the time I went to first grade, that would have only been the her for her fourth president. Right, that's correct. Because wow. Truman, Truman took over after that. And from Truman Eisenhower. Eisenhower. And then Nixon. And then Nixon. Not Nixon, Ken, Not Kennedy. Kennedy. She wanted Nixon. Nineteen sixty three was Kennedy, right. Oh, so yeah, you only had four presidents that you remember. You know, had a half a dozen or more. By the time I went, to, by the time I went to first grade. Huh. Wow. I know. Yeah. Well, look, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to so you guys can hop off to Ocala. Yes, yeah. we are. We're gonna go do that. I love you. Love me too. You guys have phone. Phone. I saw the phone in your hand. I couldn't say phone. I had to say phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we love you. Love you too. Have yeah. fun. We love it. Bye. Talk to you later. Bye.